Hi, this is Shadi and today we're gonna be discussing the Gracie Combatives course and lessons, the one that Hanner and Heron used to specifically and personally train the military, the police, and also use it as one of their best self-defense courses that has the basics for judo slash jujitsu. Uh, also, they have lessons in it that concern uh, general a self-defense situation like being caught up against a wall, uh, how to defend a standing headlock, transference of the weight, you know, keeping your base, stuff that you can also find in the self-defense unit of Hicks and Gracie. Uh, it is very uh, efficient if you are a white belt slash blue belt in jiu-jitsu or colored belt to, you know, early shodan in judo, stuff like that are very essential and basic when it comes to really securing a position, understanding weight transference, and also um, setting up a submission. And also to the side, there's the self-defense, which like I said, the general scenarios of self-defense that are sh that should be discussed in every martial art, not just judo and jujitsu. So as I've said many times, the basics will take you a very long way. And here we can see the judo basics, found in the Gracie Combative, so let's discuss them. And here we start with the first fight. Uh, the guy uh, shoots in, the jiu-jitsu guy sprawls, and then gets the uh, guillotine choke and immediately ends the fight once he secures the uh, closed guard. So here you see uh, secured, gets the legs, pulls his wrist towards him, fight ends. This is a Mai Hadaka Jime, the guillotine choke, or front naked choke. Here you see uh, a great recent example in 2019 on the IGF World Tour. Uh, he tries to get his leg out in order to not uh, to get the pin, at least if he did not get the choke. He turns it over with like a sweep and then chokes and finishes the match. My Hadaka Jime. So here we go to the next example. Shoots in on a single leg that can also be considered Moro Tegari but uh, fails to take him down at, or gets a takedown, but it's very controlled. Uh, the guy tries to get up and then he tries to climb up in a mount position, climbs slowly, and then the guy does like the classic reaction of turning his back and gets caught in Ushiro Gatame or the back mount followed by Hadaka Jime. Uh, but first he did like a mount or the Tate Shio Gatame one of the staples of pins in Kodokan Judo. You can do uh, all sorts of things when it comes to the head. What matters is the Shio Gatame or four uh, points hold. Shio is four. So you have to have like, uh, in French is appui, like four pillars. So you have the knees, the elbows. So you can do whatever you want with the head and arms. It can be like an arm triangle. You can uh, double underhook and then secure the pin. Uh, you can grab the collar and then put your elbows down. Uh, anything that in order to have the uh, Tate Shio Gatame. So it has many variations. Here you see the Hadaka Jime or the back mount. Uh, I'm sorry, the naked choke. And here you can see like a, from done from a gable grip and also being done with like a palm on the biceps. Very classical. Also, we see it in Jiu Jitsu a lot. And it was done with that example from the back mount or the Ushiro Gatame. Here you see it, he rolls over and secures the choke with the hooks in and gets the tap. Here you see it from the turtle position, also it can be done. Naked choke, Hadaka Jime, a staple. The basics will take you a very long way, as I've said multiple times. Here the guy wants a redo, I believe. Uh, they scramble, gets like a outer leg sweep, hook, uh, gets into side control, tries to transition into mount via neon belly, but fails. The guy turns him over because the neon belly is not a very stable position, but gets the guard, tries to go for like triangle, but then switches into Juji Gatame or the armbar and gets the tap. So here you see the first one, the outer leg sweep is the Kosoto Gake. Uh, you can unbalance with multiple ways from the clinch, 
the headlock. If, if it's a gi, you can do like a kuzushi to the side and then take away their leg from underneath them as it was their last support. Um, all the octagon analysis matches that I've done uh, in MMA, they all had this one particular technique in common, which is the Kosoto Kake, because it is that effective, but it's one of the basics here. You can faint with Uchimata and finish with Kosoto Gake. So it's a staple, very effective. Here we see it done in the Gracie challenges in the early 90s. And then uh, transitions into Yoko Shiogatame, which is the side control, also has many variations. You can grab the belt or the skirt from underneath the leg or you can put the uh, arm underneath their shoulder in order to secure the head and the arm and you can place your uh, hand on the mat to you know uh, control the weight transference as they are trying to get out from underneath you here you are seeing like i said one of the staples and the basics in judo and jujitsu being used very effective here you see the palm on the mat in order to really control uh, Uke's movements as they are trying to uh, move from underneath you so it's kind of like a weight transference management thing you do the same with mount as you uh, pose your hand on the mat uh, in order to avoid like the trap and roll or uh, you know like the bridging and shrimping so on and so forth so it has multiple variations the yoko shiogatame or the side control but incredibly effective here's another variation and then finishes off with traditional juji gatame you can uh, do like a triangle hold and then uh, switch into uh, a regular juji gatame you switch the legs uh, this is actually a very advanced not very advanced but advanced variation that uh, prevents you from getting stacked hickston talks about this in his uh, self-defense unit uh, because when you do like the white belt variation, which I'm going to show soon, uh, you can get stacked easily. But this one where you like grab with the triangle and then go for Juji Gatame, uh, it's hard to get stacked here. This is the white belt variation. The first one you uh, learn, you can easily get stacked with it. But nonetheless, it's one of the basics. If they don't know what they're doing, you can easily score with Juji Gatame. Here, uh, the next fight he goes in i think he wanted a redo this guy so here they are like scrambling with the grips etc like like uh little kicks goes post guard gets the uh like a triangle hold almost the guy uh escapes scrambles try to go for a double leg sloppy double leg gets the kimura and then gets the tap easily So this is of course Uday Garami, you can get it from half guard, you can get it from closed guard, here you see it, someone as they are trying to pass guard, you shrimp, uh, get a hold of the leg and then finish with Uday Garami, classic, basic, yet so efficient, um, it's known as Kimura for the famous Masaiko Kimura, here you can do like a reverse type, not only the uh, fist down but also the fist can be up like a americana what you call it in jiu-jitsu so he noticed how he's hooking the leg being in half guard rather than being uh, side controlled so here uh, the challenge continues the uh, gracie jiu-jitsu guy is in the uh, gray shirt i believe here he goes for like a body lock and then goes uh, puts the hooks in tries to go for ushiro gatame the back mount the guy is scrambling and trying to escape but ends up in the guy's guard the open guard and closed guard more scrambles this is the reality of street fights it's not gonna be like an mma fight where you can study patterns everyone is going on a pattern and very well disciplined street fights uh, are usually like this a lot of scrambling so uh, it's very hard to control them because there's no pattern to study there's no uh, rhythm so it's very hard to control so street fights are a thing of its own so very good for them to like go into these fights and challenges and then apply these uh, very effective basic moves that take you a very long way here he's in the uh, side control he has the headlock but 
you know if you know a thing or two uh, having your head locked uh, while you are putting the side control you know that you're in no danger the guy is just fending you off but that it's a matter of time until they get tired and then you finish them off but when it comes to the position you are 100 percent dominant so there's no worry here he gets out of the headlock eventually tries to go for neon belly then here you can see he has the uh the variation where you have the uh, arm on like hooking the leg of Yokoshi Ogatame, switches to mount via knee on belly, gives a few slaps to disorient his opponent, and then he is managing the mount by putting the uh, arms on the mat. So here there's a front headlock, Hanner talks about it as a lesson, so it's nice to go into these details uh, and then finishes off easily. So here you see Morote Gari, he went for it at the beginning and try to go for uh, like the dominant positions. Morotegari can be done with a single leg as you saw earlier. Here you can be done from Kuzushi. Uh, Morotegari reaping the legs towards you, not lifting them up. That would be Sukuinage. Here you see also I've showed it many times in MMA or just basic. Here you can dive in going to one leg that can also be considered Morotegari as you are reaping with both hands here you see going in and you continue to roll so you cannot end up in the guard so here i believe this is uh mauricio i would I, i'm not sure but uh if you want to go watch henner he names all the fighters here you see like a low single uh, as you saw like the morotegari i just show he goes into keza gatame almost or like a side control gets into mount also very basic stuff i've shown before controls the head has the elbows down on the mat uh very heavy and very hard to turn them around at this point here you can see he's managing the weight transference by putting the hand on the mat gets the ushiro gatame or the back mount very classical uh beginner reaction where they turn around and they give you their back you flatten out and then gets the tap easily here i believe this is mauricio i'm not sure so here the guy with the shorts they look like uh boy band members the the ones challenging the graces so here is like like i said the street fights this is what they will look like there's a scramble there is like uh uh, it's not gonna look good like in MMA fight because there's no patterns. There's no strategy It's just gonna be people swinging so controlling them. is gonna be a bit hard, but uh, The Gracie challenge shows that it can be done with the basics of Judo and Jiu Jitsu so here he has like a front headlock Henner goes over how what to do in the front headlock It's also another lesson found in the self-defense unit. So here he gets out of the headlock easily and then the fight still goes on. Uh, the guy tries to go for the legs. He secures an armbar, but the arm is bent. So it's a bit uh, difficult to stretch it out with the belly down uh, variation. Here you see he's struggling. He's tried to hold on to his arm because he saw his friends, what happened to them. Here he goes back to guard. Still scrambling. The guy puts all his weight down to avoid being, you know, stretched out and have his arm broken or choked or whatever here, but eventually, you know, gets the tap. Again, classic beginner reactions to the guard where you can easily tap them out. So here, this is the uh, conclusion of it. So as you just saw the scrambling, etc. It's far different from what you see in MMA matches. So for example, if you have an MMA match against someone, what you try to do in the first place is look at his matches, study them, try to see how his patterns go. So a strategy is a series of patterns and then to break it, you have to study it and then reverse it with your own uh, strategy to counter the other guy's strategy. But when it comes to street fights and I've seen a lot of street fights, it's gonna look pretty much like uh, as you saw here, scrambling, flailing, kicking, uh, swinging, and even though they cannot fight, some people like have 
big hands naturally so swinging in this matter can really hurt someone so really getting the uh, distance managed and then closed in in order to get either the clinch or the grips on the close in order to initiate the takedown or maybe do something like a standing choke is not something to be uh, taken lightly it's something that's incredibly difficult and incredibly uh, you know mentally is not easy someone just flailing at you and uh you know the first response is to panic but to manage the distance and all these things is not something easy and this is why you know mma is not 100 percent a uh, representation of reality there's clothes there's people that don't know what they're doing and yet they can be very dangerous so uh sometimes we ha we train so much that we have things in our instinct but sometimes someone that's not trained or at least something like boxing or kickboxing it's gonna be uh, incredibly difficult especially when there's no pattern so as you saw here with the basics you can do that so it's nice to see that the stuff we train judo jiu-jitsu can be easily effective when it comes to the street fights and someone that's doesn't have a pattern so if you have anything else to add please let me know down below also consider supporting me on patreon uh, i have a few videos already up for the patrons uh, only uh, maybe you might like to check that out so if you have anything else to add let me know down below this was shady and thank you for listening